going to wrap up with our lesson one discussion. So, if you can still remember, we already had our uh, getting to know you session um, last week as well as the start of our lesson one. We did that so that we can make up for our lost time. We weren't able to meet uh, during our scheduled orientation no, because <clears throat> I encountered some problems with our school. So, we're just going to continue with lesson one. And then I'll also be having a bit of an introduction on how we're going to answer activities in uh, Google Classroom because I've noticed I already gave activities to the to the other sections and then medyo they still have a hard time um in okay so they still have a hard time in using Google Classroom because uh, may iban nga medyo new pa sa ila ha? so I'll be also introducing that one to you after our class so that once we have our activity next week, asynchronous activity, kabalo na kamo kung diin ka magkadto. And then, if ever you can download files from Google Classroom, we can have other alternatives where you can answer uh, your activities. Okay, let me just... Share my screen. Okay, just a recap from what we discussed last meeting. So I presented to you all the learning objectives that you will you will learn from lesson one, such as you'll be able to define tourism differentiate tourists from excursionists to understand the various elements of travel used as a criteria for defining travelers and or tourists to explain the nature of a tour to elucidate the characteristics of a tourist product and a tourist destination to compare tourism with other industries and to appreciate the importance of tourism so we define tourism um, as a sum of phenomena and relationships uh, arising you know, from travel and stay of non-residents in so far as they do not lead to permanent residence and are not connected with earning any earning activity. This was defined by professors Honziker and Kraft of Bern University in Switzerland. Basically, to put it simply, diba, we define tourism as traveling outside of your place of residence and dapat at least 100 kilometers no? and among activities you're not earning any money. You're spending money. So, activities ni mo are, is more into pleasure or more into leisure activities. Okay? So, same as what is defined in the Tourism Society in Britain and Tourism Society in Cardiff. Mo travel ka outside of your place of residence and work. And you stay there for a long time, other um, more than 24 hours. And mo mga activities related to tourism, related to leisure and pleasure you're not really traveling outside of your place of residence to earn money but more into spending money so we also were able to um encounter the five no five main characteristics of tourism diba so it's more on relationships and phenomena so medyo 100 ang meron no so it's more on phenomena and relationships. It's more on psychological. Okay, syempre, uh, we capitalize on emotions and experience of our tourists. Uh, it's not like any tangible product na ginagamit ni mo, but it's more on we go there to experience and to enjoy. Diba? So, more on phenomena and relationships with tourism. It has two elements, if you can remember. Dynamic element or the static element. Ang dynamic element is the journey going to your destination and the static element is when you get to your destination and you stay there for more than 24 hours okay and then temporary lang na siya, no? you travel for less than a year and more than 24 hours so more you chef just familiarize all the five main elements of tourism again if dili maklaro sa inyong screen pwede raman ninyo na siya i pinch no and then you zoom in or you can click the kanang box to pad sa 
uh, pin button. Pwede nyo na siya i-click sa ubos para ma um, mudako ang screen. Or pwede po nyo i-rotate inyong screen horizontal. Okay? Para mudako-dako ang view sa inyong ng phone. Because you can't actually see the text. Okay, nyo. It's just very different from the tourism industry, you no? Know, because the hospitality industry is under the umbrella of the tourism industry. So it is from the Latin word hospitare, meaning to receive as a guest. It's more on providing food and comfortable accommodation to our travelers. So basically, the tourism industry will not thrive without the hospitality industry. Kay part of of the part of the. Uh, Enhancement of the experience sa itong mga tourist is having food and comfortable accommodation. Kung imong i-advertise si Sagay as a tourism destination, but ang syuda dili ka provide of food, beverage, or comfortable accommodation to the travelers, din dili din siya ma-enjoy ang ato ang mga tourists. No? And then, it's not really... Um, it, it's not really an enjoyable experience for them. Dili mo siya matawag na tourism destination. So, dili mag-exist ang tourism industry without the hospitality industry. And dili po mag-exist ang hospitality industry without the tourism industry. So, muna kong giingon sa inyo. Hano, kano sa mga makaingon if the uh, tourist is already partaking in the hospitality and tourism industry? If mag- Magstay si tourist in a hotel, grabs a dinner at a nice restaurant, mag hire siya tour guide, mag fly siya of plane, he or she is supporting the hospitality industry. Because the hospitality industry provides those services. Specifically, gani hotel and restaurant. Now, kung tourism na gani, no, you will, you are supporting the tourism industry if the moment that you decide, the moment that you decide to travel, and choose a certain destination, you are supporting the tourism industry or you are partaking in the tourism industry. So then, tourism affects hospitality because if there's an influx of tourists, syempre, there will be an establishment of hospitality uh, infrastructures, no? Or, for example, like hotels and restaurants. And if naapoy hotels and restaurants, surely there will be tourists also coming in. So, tourism affect hospitality and hospitality affect tourism. It's just a recap of what we discussed last week. So, money siya, no? Money ang mga services provided by the hospitality industry. Accommodation, food and beverage, timeshare, events, entertainment. On tourism, tour operators, transportation services, attractions, tourism information centers. So, they promote and interact with each other and both contributes to the national economy and promoting of the development of the society. So they cannot be separated. They coexist and they help each other. We also uh, discuss the meaning of tourists, diba? as long as mag travel siya outside of, of their place of residence, for more than 24 hours, matawag siya as tourist. Pero kung less than 24 hours, dili siya mag overnight stay, they tour lang siya, excursionist ang tawag sa iyaha. And then again, matawag siyang turista kung or kung travel o tourism activity kung matravel siya outside of the place of residence, outside of place of work. Wala siya nag-travel to earn money but ka-travel siya to enjoy, to relax for leisure and pleasure activities. Pleasure, sorry. Pleasure activities. And then uh, ga travel siya more than 24 hours but less than a year and then also si tourist dapat um, again no, outside place of work and residence so many mga activities niya or purpose why he or she is traveling So, again, we discuss also the elements of travel. We have the distance, length of stay, residence of the traveler, and purpose of travel. And also the types of tourism, domestic, international, 
tourism. We discussed last time also the nature of a tour. So we have inclusive tour, meaning na nag-avail siya tour package. And then pwede siya independent, ikaw lang usa, or group kung na kay kauban. Independent tour, kung ikaw lang mismo mag-avail sa tourism services, wala ka nagkuha o tour operator or travel agency to arrange your itinerary for you. Okay. We also discussed the characteristics of a tourist product. We have service, largely psychological in its attraction, tends to vary in standard and quality over time, and the product is fixed. Okay? So, let us now proceed to the tourist destination. We weren't able to discuss this one last meeting. So, ito na siyang i-continue karun. So, the tourist destination is a geographical unit where the tourist visits and stays. It may be a village, a town, a city, a district, a region, an island, a country, or a continent. The success of a tourist destination depends upon the interrelationship of three basic factors. So, you have attractions, amenities, or facilities, and accessibility. Actually, we have this five A's of tourism. Kung sa maning five A's of tourism, mara po siya kaning basic factors of a tourist destination, pero mas daghan siya. Kung sa marketing pa, mara po siya four P's of marketing, pero hindi mo na siya pito, no? With the inclusion of people, physical evidence, and process. In the tourist destination, di lang siya matawag o tourist destination class if wala siya gapossess o five A's of tourism. <coughs> which includes attractions, amenities, activities, accessibility, and accommodation. In here, tolo lang. In your macro perspective na subject, tolo lang na siya ang nalista. Pero there are actually five. Okay? So, wala ni Dire, no? This is off record, or not really off record, but I mean, not part of the slides, but we have five A's of tourism. Attractions, amenities, accessibility, um, sorry, na-disrupt ko sa nagsulod. Accommodation and activities. So, ang wala diri is ang activities and accommodation. Pero, giusa na siya tanan sa amenities. So, ang sa may butsilingan anino. So, when we look at the five A's of tourism from Butler, nag-develop sa tourism development theory by Butler, ang ilahan ning gifocus is, say, a tourist is going to visit a certain destination they have to be provided with all the necessary ng mga facilities para ma nindot ang iya hang stay dira ng destination. Kung ang five days of tourism makuwag usa, let's say, wala siya accessibility, na siya attraction, na siya amenities, na siya activities, attraction, amenities, activities, na apod siya akom ah accommodation. Pero wala siya accessibility. Meaning, naan siya man-made and, and natural attractions. Meaning, mo na ang main purpose nga numuag to kadira nga place to see the attraction itself. na siya amenities, kay kompeto siya sa shopping mall. na siya healthcare facilities, spa, gym, mga ana. na siya activities. So, na ay mga nightlife activities, na ay mga concerts, no? sa panay mga lain nga activities pa jud nga ma-partake ni tourist nga mag-enjoy siya other than just looking at the attraction pwede siya mag-partake sa kanang mga nightlife activities casino pwede siya mag day activities like island hopping no and then naapod siya accommodation kay naay mga hotels naghan kay siya kastiyan pili lang siya na affordable na expensive na ay na ay hotels na ay inns no ay lain nga klase nga accommodation pero wala siya accessibility so ay but silingon ana ang accessibility is dili uh, dili se uh, dili sementado ang roads kulang og mga schedules for uh, transportation like mogto lang ka ani sa ilahang destination duhara ang trip so magtapok dito sa terminal 
Ang tendency ana no very inconvenient sa part ni tourist kay magpila sa taas kaayo para mo sakay lang anang transportation kay duha ra ang schedule sa trip. Dili daghan og sakyanan available, dili daghan og schedule available. The roads pa lang daan lubak 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 no dili dili siya cemented. Dili nindot ang ang roads nila going to that destination. Plus 10 hours ang travel by land going there. So, it's not accessible, meaning it's not a very good tourism destination. Masking nito't pa kayo na mga tourist attractions nira, daghan siyag mga amenities and accommodation and activities, if it's not accessible, it's not a good tourist destination. Do you think people will invest traveling there? O na uban siguro, kamong mga batan on, you would say, ah, yes ma'am, kay if worth it naman ang attraction, why not? I'll just, you know, magsakripisyo og 10 hours na travel, magsakripisyo og taas na pila kay duhara ang ang scheduled trips, okay ra na. But what about our other demographics of our target market? Like the older older people, no? Or the the younger ones nga wala jud sila endurance or dili wala sila patience to travel that long. Okay? So, mo po na siya, no? That's a major factor. Dapat kompleto na ang 5 A's of tourism. Okay? Another example, what if kompleto tan kompleto na accessibility wala po kay accommodation. You have beautiful attractions, natural and man-made attractions. Ngamo na main purpose why your tourists are going to travel there. You have complete amenities, you have shopping centers, you have pasalubong centers, you have healthcare centers in kaso oh, na matabo sa turista or kanan siya no na healthcare reasons. Na spa, na sports center, na gym, kompleto tanan. Na apod siya accessibility. Oh, 30 minutes lang going there. Kung daghan kayo mga masakyan nga motor, no, daghan kayo masakyan nga transportation going there. Daghang activities, no, na ay mga live bands, na ay island hopping or na apoy mga uh, city tours nga ma, nga matabo dira no, mga different activities, nightlife kompleto no, na ay night market na ay oh, kanang mga party clubs, na ay casino, kompleto tanan sa mga activities pero walay accommodation. Kulang sila og uh, hotels, no? Na yung mga inspiro, dali ra kayo ma-fully book. So, uban, mag-tent na lang. Dali ra ba tanan maka, maka uyon og tent, no? Or camping. ba? So, magguba ra dyan po ng overall experience ni tourist because galak siya anang usaka aspect, which is accommodation. So, a tourist destination must have, manang uh, ingon for a for the success of a tourist destination, dapat kompleto ang katong basic factors. So, instead of three, we're going to make it five. Okay, kinahanglan man nga na accommodation, activities, to add to the attractiveness of a tourist destination. Do you get my point? Kindly raise your hand if you understand, or have an emoji baron, or any indication that you understand. Okay. So, po siya rin, no? Ipa-unmute man ta ni Tamuno niya. Nadya po yung magsigig unmute. Ah, pa-unmute. Oh, I allow you to unmute, no? Pero, kanang, naiuban siya magsigig o unmute, maski magklasi ta sakit sa dalungga, no? Ga headset po. Uh, and then, po ano, kanang, kalitrag unmute, so, maka-disrupt po. So, you will just stay on mute. Um, I will let you unmute after the entire uh, discussion if you have any questions, okay? And then, if you have questions, i-type lang. No? Nanag-type nga, duha daw kuno sila using the device. Kay Lobat or walay ko anong usa. So, okay lang. At least nabasa raman ako. If you have questions, you can just type it in the chat box. Okay. So, atong itagsa-tagsa ang mga basic factors. You have attractions. Under attractions, we have site attraction, event attractions, natural attraction, and man-made attraction. When we say site attraction, uh, the the building itself or the infrastructure itself is there. You have like the Molo Mansion in Iloilo. Or for example, kana museum niyo no, sa Sagay. Or um, a historical uh, historical landmark. Sa pa. Um, pwede man museum, pwede church. Historical site man na ang church. No, kanang karaan na dyan kaayo. Like Vito Church, no? Mga yung anak. Kung sa pa yung uh, lain, no? Anything na dili siya, kanang, dili siya, 
alam I mean magstay siya dira for an entire year or until forever kasi syempre it's a site attraction it may be a building it may be a, a historical landmark um pwede mang gani ka nang um pars anang uh, memorial no pars ato na mat mga Jews nga gipatay during uh, world war o katong kwan sa mga Nazis no na wala sila murag memorial so that's also like uh, a historical uh, site pwede pud na siya so any attraction as man-made man or natural nga building ba siya uh, a landmark or for example ruins pwede po ng ruins no kanang kanang gisunog siya or or gibomba siya during the war para sa anang the ruins pwede po siya yung site attraction kay syempre gisunog ba na siya during the Japanese occupation no kay tungod para dili siya magamit as ilahang hiding place so gisunog na lang siya so ang mark ang skeleton na lang or ang um, katon na lang ang kuha na lang ang building na lang sa the ruins ang nabilin mag skeleton na lang sa the ruins nabilin pero makita siya po nimo sa pillars class katong M nga nag-intertwine kay kan man to siya mara man to siya symbol sa names ni Don Mariano o ni uh, sa tapangalan si asawa Mar- Maria nalimot ako. So, um, I'll get back to you on that. So, ang ilang names nga letter M, no? So, syempre, nag-intertwine ang letter M. Um, that is the, murag, nabili na lang rin siya sa pillars dito sa entrance sa the ruins. So, muna ang example sa site, site attraction. It could be um, a museum, a ruins of a, of an old building. It could be an old church. No, anything nga kana pwede siya makuanan og tourist. Pwede pud ganyo siya kana for example, a man-made forest, mo na siya site attraction na siya. Ang event attraction on the other hand, dili siya permanent nga magstay dira. Ang event attraction for example, you have like uh sinulog, no? Or um sa mo apinta flores, mascara festival. Okay? dinagyang. So, kanang mga ing-ana class, they only happen once a year. Na po yung event attractions nga mag-happen every month lang or twice a year. So, kana siya, dili siya permanent nga magstay stay anang location. Okay? Mag-exist lang na siya for the particular day and then mawala na po siya after. So, for example, kaning event, good for one week lang. Or kaning event, good for two days ra. After ana, wala na. So, nga nung gitawag siya po siya attraction. Kaya syempre, ginadayo man siya po siya o tourist. Like, sinulog, diba? Daghan kig mga turista mag-visit sa Cebu just to partake in sinulog. O ba, gani, dili man siya about sa bala ang bata ang ilang ilahang purpose nang uban nila kay mag-attend ragan mga night party, street party sa, sa sinulog. Which is not really the main reason or or the main purpose of sinulog, di ba? The sinulog is more on um, celebration sa sa Senior Santo Nino. Okay? So, muna may examples of event attraction. You go there every uh, January because you're going to partake in sinulog. Or, for example, in Pinta Flores, you're going to partake in Pinta Flores every November. Kaya November man ang pista sa mo, ano? So, that's an example of event attractions. After that, after mahuman ang, ang festival, after mahuman ang kana nga event okay kwa na pud uh, wala na pud no? wala na pud mga turista kay more lang giad to pwede pud may include during events attraction class kanang mga conferences or kanang mga convention food expos kanang sa corep nga mga events so say they're open to outsiders man para uh, as audience no? pwede pud na siya ng example of events attraction it happens only several months and then wala na pud so wala na pud reason to go there Pas kun sama good mga agtura man na ang mga mga tourist sa Amua every November because they want to enjoy uh, Pinta Flores Festival ang amuang Agri Fair dito mga rides so mura na ang ilang agtuon that's events attraction but if they want to go to San Carlos Borromeo Cathedral or our Paseo de Flores then that is already site attraction because it stays there for the entire year no di man siya seasonal unlike event attraction Now, for natural and man-made attraction, you already know what it is. 
natural attraction gani um, wala siya gihimo sa tawo and then ang man-made attraction syempre gihimo sa tawo ma'am for example what if ang zoo man-made siya or natural so syempre man-made because the animals that you put there are not really originally from from that place dili man originally from from Cebu or Manila na iuban din ang mga animals gipangkuha man sa lain nga lugar gihimuan lang sila og like sanctuary or cage or place asa sila e butang or e display then muna siya that's man made uh may yung itag natural attraction it has been existing there before siya na discovered sa tawo but if there is like like human intervention naghimo ko og man made pond mam considered ba niya siya as man-made or natural? Siyempre, man-made kay wala man ay pond, dira, no? Mura man ang gihimuhimuan, dira. Ang natural attraction, wala dyan siya gi, gihilabtan sa tawo, no? Meaning, ana, it's already been existing there before ni muna siya na-discover. Like, alin siya one false? It's a natural attraction. Or, kanang false, sige, butangan lang viewing deck, that's a natural attraction because ga-exist na na siya, dira. Um, wala man na siya ingon nga himo-himo sa tao. Okay? Alam na siya gin-create for the purpose of an attraction. Or, for example, ang sa kanyang mga lain, ha? Kanin siya nga river, abe. Lubok river. Exist naman na siya way before pa uh, tourism activity. So, it's a natural attraction. Pero kanyang mga man-made, nga ikaw na naghimoan na nga pond, ikaw na naghimoan na nga forest, then that is man-made attraction. Even though it looks like natural in nature because, syempre, kay kung man trees or it's a pond, but the mere fact that it's made by man, man-made na siya. Okay, let's proceed to amenities or facilities. So, syempre, importante po niya ay na tourist destination, dapat na accommodation. In five years of tourism, naka-separate si accommodation from amenities. So, in here, giusa siya, no? So, accommodation, food, local transport, communications, and entertainment. And then, next, we have accessibility. So, muna kong giingon kanina. Regular and convenience of transport in terms of time. So, daghag schedule available. Daghag transportation available. And the distance. Dili ing anak kaldu. Ko ano, kalayo, kadugay. 10 hours and travel dito. 5 hours kung imurang ko an pakusgan o, o padagan. So, layo rin siya pun kayo siya. No? The distance as well to the destination from the originating country at a reasonable price. So, we also include in accessibility also the fare. If ang plate is very expensive, then it's not really accessible at all because it's not accessible to everyone. Only those who are rich can access that destination. But if it's like the price is reasonable or affordable for our tourists, then it is also accessible. Okay. Let's proceed with tourist services. So the tourist services are, syempre, the passenger transport, accommodation, food, and beverage and entertainment, and then services provided by the travel agent and by the tour operator. What are those services? Pwede tour guide. If you need a tour guide to help you get accustomed to the place kaya you don't, you're not really familiar with the area, so you need a tour guide. Or, kapuyan ka, no? Kung nang, oh, kabudlay man, oy nga, ako pa mag-arrange akong itinerary. Ako pa mag-book sa kong flight. Ako pa mag-book sa kong room. Ako pa mag-book sa car rental. Budlay man, mangita online. Book, budlay man, mag-book mag through booking.com or sa Agoda. So, I will instead um, go to a travel agency and then, syempre, mag-hire ka or mo-pay ka sa services provided by the travel agent and the tour operator. Si tour operator, bahala mo organize, mo arrange sa mong tour itinerary. Meaning, from day 1, 2, and 3 of your entire trip, nakaplano na na ni tour operator and siya na na nag-book tanan nagbook na na siya sa o ano sa imuhang flight pa agto sa lugar o pabalik papuli nagbook na, na siya hotel room for two nights three days nagbook na na siya sa restaurant kung asa ka gusto mo kaon di ba tanan kung sa imuhang mga services needed for your trip 
the tour operator can arrange it. Now, what is the job of the travel agent? Si travel agent maoy mo rag middleman or siya ay mo endorse, mo siya salesman ba? Siya mo endorse, mo sales talk, unsay mga nindot na tour package si avail and siya po na ang mo act as the middleman so siya ang mo ask kay mong preferences unsa man mo mga gusto activities ma'am or sir for your two nights, three days nga trip then mo niyang i-relay sa tour operator. Si tour operator mo arrange ato nga mga activities. Dayon iyang i-endorse sa travel agent, si travel agent ang mo explain sa imuha. So to put it simply in layman's term, si tour operator ang mag-arrange sa tanan nimong mga needs in your entire trip. He or she will arrange your tour itinerary from your hotel room to your plane tickets to your car rental restaurant reservations and then si travel agent ang maoy mo baligya sa imuha okay siya mo sales talk ma'am if mahalan ka ning tour package pwede ta ka customize oh siya mo ko ano siya mo sales talk mo baligya sa uh, tanan nga pipang arrange nga tour package ni tour operator pwede ready made tour package mo ni avail kanang kapuyan na ka magpili-pili for yourself there is already a a ready-made tour package, or if you want, customized. Para ma-customize po nimo ang price. Okay? Based on your budget. So, if you really do not want um, a hassle trip, gusto ka hassle-free, the tour operator and travel agent will provide those for you. Okay? Pero, kuan po, kung gusto ka ikaw, kay makatipid ka, kay syempre, it's, it's expensive if you avail the services of the travel agent and the tour operator kay naman na sila percentage pud ana so you can also do the planning on your own pero it's very hassle because ikaw tanan no ikaw tanan magkontak ikaw tanan magbook magchoose og mga ko ano trips nga na promo okay let us now proceed to the importance of tourism. So, di ba, I already mentioned that tourism is very vital when it comes to the economic growth. It can provide uh, income no, and also jobs to, uh, to the local community and even um, help improve our economy, no, syempre. So, daghan po juga ayog importance on tourism, not just sa... Ano, economy lang aside. So, we will start first with contribution to the balance of payments. So, tourism and hospitality can help correct the balance of payments and deficits of many countries by earning the much-needed foreign currency in international trade. So, ang mga countries nga na ay um, deficit no? sa koan nila sa ilahang nga country syempre and then ang tourism ug hospitality ang maka help reduce sa ato nga deficits or utang in short kay ang Spain, Mexico, Philippines, Thailand, Hong Kong and Singapore. So they rely in the tourism and hospitality industry to reduce those deficits or utang. Diba syempre if our if our national funds or government funds are not enough um, to sustain our sustain you know, or to to support our like projects or ang, ang country itself so mo utang na sila sa World Bank kunya syempre utang man na siya bayaran man jud na dapat to pila na to kabili na tong utang no o dako na ra ba ning lobo sa sugod pag pandemic so syempre para ma, ma hinahinay pud og reduce ang katong utang you have tourism and hospitality to help you in what way so if countries or let's say let's say a certain city is earning that much because of tourism so syempre not only because tourists are spending maka benefit po ang katong mga businesses because uh, the tourists are spending their money in their business kana pong mga um naas hospitality and tourism industry they will be able to have a job no kay syempre kung daghang turista daghang ipatukod nga mga infrastructures and if there are hospitality and tourism infrastructures nga gipatukod like hotels, resorts or other tourism infrastructures they would need people 
because people make up our human resources make up the tourism and hospitality industry and if you hire more people then eventually you no know, they will pay taxes as well they can contribute to our um fund no or national fund na to if they pay taxes kasi syempre na naman sila trabaho at the same time kana pong mga nag-spend sa hotels no kana siya makatabang po na siya og um in our economy no so that can help lessen uh, dimension ngun balance but at least reduce the deficits of a country mga kwan kwan yang utang kay unsa man tong pambayad sa utang syempre tong taxes sa mga pud Diba? So, next is dispersion of development. So, international tourism and hospitality is the best means to spread wealth among countries, thus bridging the economic gap between the rich and the poor nations. So, if there is an influx of tourists, like what I've said, kung naghan ganig turista mo ang tuan na nga lugar, there is a need to build more infrastructures. And kung naghan ganig infrastructures nga ma-build, the more mo asenso ang usaka lugar, kay more income, more jobs, okay, for people living there. And na magay uban mo, migrate na lang ana sa inyuhang lugar, kay tungod na ay better opportunities. Okay? So, that's what happened to Sagay, no? When they had their lumber company before so na close naman ano kay nahurot naman ang mga dagko nga nga trees ninyo dira sa sagay na balhin sa hinubaan pero before daghan kinag migrate mo nang ko ano melting pot na ang sagay sa different culture and language so there are other people who are living in sagay who can speak in bisaya and then others can also speak in hiligaynon because there are a lot of people who migrated sa una pa nga panahon because Um, at that time, no, dako mang pong kaayo o kanang opportunity sa Sagay because of the lumber company and sugar mills, no? So, muna siya, dagan kayo from Bohol, Cebu, uh, Gimaras, and Iloilo ni travel to Sagay for better opportunities. Way back, katupang ga-exist in yung lumber company. Karun, wala na, no, kung ano ang na nasa hinubaan siya na transfer. Same goes with Cebu and Manila, di ba? Kalabanan ng uban, they would really go out from provinces and go to Cebu or Iloilo or sa Manila to find, uh, to look for better jobs. Kaya laghan mo kayo itong mga infrastructures, laghan mo kayo ito o ka ng, um, di ba yung daghan dyan kaayo pero na may mga job vacancies. So, yan na, no? If there is, um, a dispersion of development uh, if there is tourism the i sorry if there is tourism then there is a call to build more infrastructure and with more infrastructure more opportunities for employment and for income and then number three effect on general economic development so expenditures or if mag spend si tourists can have beneficial effects on our economic sector So, it can lead to development of different industries and other economic activities. Okay, kaya syempre, tanag na services silang provide naman eh, mga value-added tax, and then, kung daghan ganig, um, let's say, for example, if you have 5,000 tourists visiting your place in just one week, and then, 5,000 tourists ha niya, kada o sa katurista, mag-spend sila of at least Uh, one hundred forty dollars per day. One hundred forty dollars that is at least ten thousand pesos per day. Imagine unsa kadako na siya uh, nga income on the part sa mga businesses, di ba? And then if mag, uh, syempre, na po na value added tax if you purchase services or you avail services, purchase goods. Wala ko dako po kasi contribution, no? It has a big effect on general economic development. Number four, employment opportunities like what I've said, big balik region, no? With um, tourism and hospitality is a source of employment, and then um, it can also help countries nga katong na itaas so high rate of unemployment or underemployment, maka provide solution ang tourism by mana siya, no? giving the opportunities to have jobs. Yan ako, i-repeat ka na-explain naman na ako kanina. Social benefits. So, social exchange takes place when tourists come in contact with the inhabitants of the place they visit. 
So take for example, before you you feel offended about certain actions ani nga 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 individual from this country. Or let's say, hala, dili ko ginahan sa batasan ani nga certain individual coming from this country, but when you went there in their country and you were exposed and immersed in their culture, nya na witness nimo ilahang uh, adlaw-adlaw nga activities, the more you understand their culture and the more you become tolerant. Oh. For example, um, sa, sa Japan, abi no for them, it's unusual if they see women nga magpasaan o bugat or mag, magkuan, mag uh, trabaho dyan, no? very patriarchal man na ang Japan. They prefer men to work than women. So, ang matabuan na, no, kanang, at first glance, kung mag-visit ka, marag, wala, kalain sa mga bayad, abin ako, lalaki ni siya, gapasan man ni siya, o kung ano, yung bugat kay nga, nga butang, no? Marag, ma-culture ma- shock sila because they see women in the streets na magpasan o bugat, magkarga, no? Hindi sa tuwa, kay okay raman, no? Nga, we see gani workers, regardless of their gender, whether male or female, kung magtrabaho dito sila, trabaho dito, no? Wala man ay discrimination among gender sa ato, ah. So, wala. Kung ang, ang Japanese, mag, sige na siya ka, ka-expose sa ato ang culture every day and seeing we- women work same as men. So, the more they become tolerant and the more they will see the cultural changes. So, ah, okay. So, like, di, 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 like, po sa kanina country. Even in eating, for example, if you are from the Philippines, no? Anad man ta nga, ka ng, nadyo tayo ibili, no? Mabalan mong Pinoy ang gakaon, kina nadyo, mabilin nga isa ka piece. Like, for example, mag-eat mo, dayon, na yung isa ka slice na bilin, maulaw na dayon, no? Adi na kumukuha kay, ka ng, mahuya ko. Sakto ba na? No, mahuya, masyay. Okay, mahuya ko. So, dila na kukuhaon, uy, na pati delikadesa. But if you go to other countries, if you, li- if you leave one piece or one slice, that's an insult to them because it seems like you do not enjoy the food at all. So, ikaw, kung magto ka dito, ma-offend ka, kay kasabahan ka, or mag-ma-offend ang ka ng server sa imuha, kayo nagbilin ka of food. Pero, man, ito ni ma-understand, hala, I have to really finish my plate because in their country, it's different. Or, for example, di ba, when we eat, murag, it's considered rude if we eat nga na I sounds, no, ka na ganing, kanang usap ta ito if you can understand usap if mo chuta di ba if you make noise that's rude no that's improper dili siya uh what do you call this ethical i don't know if it's it's the right term no pero dili siya proper okay dili siya mag proper nga way of eating dapat mo eat ka silent lang no kung mo chuka wala dre noise pero sa Japan if you chew your food with noise it's okay for them because for them, it means that you are really enjoying the food. Umami ang food, meaning anak ka ng, um, packed with flavor ang food. You're enjoying eating it. Okay? So, muna sa ilahang country. So, ikaw magto ka dito, ma-offend ka. So, so, kung with tourism, if you travel longer, the more you understand your, understand your culture, the more you become tolerant. Okay, there is also cultural enrichment. Okay? Oh, for example, you learn that when you go to Greece, you will not make the peace sign because it is considered, oh no, uh, thumbs up sign because that is an equivalent to a middle finger in, in, in their country. So, na mga certain gestures that you need to avoid going to other countries kay abi palang uh, ng insulto ka. So, sa to ah, oh, middle finger man na ang atong insult, no? sa ilaha kay lain-lain na uban peace sign na uban katong thumbs up sign okay so with tourism the more you get to travel the more you get to explore their culture and their country the more you become tolerant and the more you understand their culture the more you will see differences ah okay sa ilaha dili dili pwede nga ni ing ana it's true to do this and that so the social background and social structure and the way of life of the local residents, you'll be able to experience that and the more you'll become more tolerant.
Okay. So, same goes with cultural enrichment. Okay? So, there is an appreciation of culture rather than isolation and judgment. With tourism, even gani class, no, you don't get, uh, I mean, you don't have to travel to a certain country to know their culture. You can go to YouTube, look for vlogs or videos about other people who who have been there nga nag travel dira and nag share sila sa online platform kung unsay culture sa ilahang giadtuan na country. Okay, so there is still an advantage in tourism because um it it provides like a bridge to different countries and the more we become more tolerant and more accepting of their culture. So wala na isolation, wala na judgment, wala na lack of trust because the more you will know, okay, if I do this, it it may be um it may be okay with my culture, pero sa ilahang lugar it is already insulting, so avoid lang ko kumuagto ko dito, this and that. Okay, educational significance. So tourism and hospitality enhances one's education. International uh, international conferences, seminars, and study trips held each year enable people of all nations to exchange ideas, propose solutions to problems, and share their concerns. With tourism, oh, sorry, sorry, and next na po. You get to learn from other people through seminars, workshops. You get to collaborate and communicate with people with, from different countries, from different cultural backgrounds, and you get to learn from them as they also can learn from you. So that's also the importance of tourism. It opens collaboration, communication, and even um, sharing of ideas, no? exchanging ideas, and uh, brainstorming to come up with solutions. And the number eight, a, fi a vital force for peace. A, pr a properly designed and developed tourism and hospitality can help bridge the psychological and cultural distances that separate people of different races, cult uh, colors, religions, and stages of social and economic development. So this means, uh, with tourism, if we wala tong giingono, going back to social benefits. So cultural enrichment na kung discuss so it can also promote no, peace no it's a vital force for peace because in tourism we can understand appreciate different people from different cultures we become more tolerant accepting sa ilaha masking lain lain tag language even if we have different language if we even though we have different cultures different traditions so we can still get along, no? Because we share, no? We open our doors to other nationalities, other countries, and we let them experience our culture for them to better understand us. And we also get to travel to their country so that we can also understand them. Okay. So, let's try to see the scenario of Lalisa to know the relationship of hospitality and tourism. So, dili kay siya makita, dili no, but let me just read it for you and then you will just lead. Okay, pakipin or pwede nyo i-pinch ka na ganing inyong i-zoom in, pwede man na inyo i-pinch ang screen para ma-zoom in ninyo or i kanang so, tawag na, auto rotate in yung, in yung phone para muda ko ang screen. Pwede pod ka nang sa obos kita mo anang so, tawag na, kanang murag cor opat ka book corners dira sa obos just below your face baron. I click lang na nimo and then mo expand ra na ang screen. Okay? So, ipin lang. Sige lang. Um Pwede mo mag-explore, explore sa Google Meet na may mga ipang tap-tap dira no, para at least mo expand ang screen. Anyway, I will be sending this one or nasanda mag ako ang slides. You can go to our Google Classroom. Okay, let me just read the scenario and let us try to see what is the relationship of the hospitality and tourism in the scenario of Lalisa. 
So, Lalisa loves to travel. She has been to many different countries and has had many different experiences that she loves to talk about. One day, while out to lunch with a close friend, she began to tell her friend about her latest trip to Paris. She talked about the food, the hotels, and all the wonderful sightseeing she did. Not long into the conversation, it dawned on her that all of her touristic travels are closely tied to the hospitality industry. You see, every time La Lisa travels, she partakes in some sort of hospitality service. So, on sa manidiridapit ang pagpartake niya sa hospitality and tourism. Okay. So, the moment that she talked about the food, the hotels, and sightseeing that she did, she has already supported the hospitality industry. And the mere fact that she loves to travel, and it's her own choice to travel, and um, siya'y gapili sa lugar kung asa siya mo ang to, which is Paris, she is already partaking and supporting the tourism industry. And that ends our discussion for the overview of hospitality and tourism industry. Next meeting, we will have an asynchronous activity to summarize what you have learned from our discussion this evening. Okay, let me just stop sharing. Before I will accommodate your questions let me first uh let me first teach you how to how to answer okay uh, para at least ready na ta, no? ready na ta sa atong activity next meeting we will be making use of our google uh google classroom sige lang i will accommodate questions after the uh, demonstration okay so first you have to go to google classroom um, I will upload the instructions and the file there all you have to do is just go to google classroom Okay, so mga wala pa nakasulod, hatag na po ko balik og link and code. So, sign in lang ta first. Okay, so I will show you the POV, POV of the student lang ha, on your case. I know, not here. Here the I. Pikas na ko nga account. So, naman mo yung mga emails na nanas ko. So, so kami na CSR na upod me. Pero, sa inyo ha, I'm using my personal email because you cannot actually come in my Google Classroom if you, you are not, uh, if you do not have the CSR email, the I. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, ako lang i-demonstrate sa inyo ha, how you'll be able to answer it. So, uh, this is just an example. So, for example, I will upload the activity. I will inform you, syempre, nga, class, please visit the Google Classroom. The activity is uploaded there. So, kung dili siya Google Form, kung naka-document siya, so you have to really download the doc. Wait lang for a while. Hang ang mouse. Okay. So, for example, naka-upload abi ang um, assignment. Ito lang butang, ha? What you're going to do first is you're going to download the document. Dili mo mo download, uh, dili mo mo edit sa file in Google Docs because what will happen is, for example, I will um, upload a blank template. If inyuha na siyang sorry, if inyuha na siyang ansiran, wala mo nag-download offline. So, if inyo na siyang ansiran dira, automatic na na siya ang katong blank template mo reflect imo nga answers. And then mo po na siya makita sa si mo mga classmates. So, mag-imuha rang gi-edit ang blank template nga kung gi-upload, pero 
dili gyapon na siya mo reflect sa imuhang own account. So, ang ato ang buhaton is, you have to download the document first. Not do it in online. For example, morning activity abigi upload ni teacher. Ato siyang i- i-click so that we can download it. Let me check if there is an assignment. Oh, those are materials. Supposedly, we're going to see an assignment. O, kanina lang. So, i-download sa na to ni. Click ka sa file. Imuha na siyang i- Imuha na siyang i-open. Open with Google Docs. Kung naka-cellphone ka, hatag po kong other alternatives sa Don't worry. Dili mag-worry. Kung dili ka, wala kay PC, and then wala po kay laptop, cellphone lang imong gamit. We have other alternatives where you can answer our activity next week by using the cellphone. So, naka-open sa Google Docs. Do not edit it here in Google Docs. For example, ay naka-word document ang inyong activity. You will just click file and then download it. Once you download it offline, dira ka mo mo edit sa inyo ha dyong computer, not here in Google Docs, na yun i-upload na po ni mo. Let us just assume that a document that you have downloaded from Google Docs, gikan sa Google Classroom, o kani siya no, diba itong i-open ang ang file nga gibutang sa inyong teacher. Muna ni siya. And then, ato a siyang i-download. Once we download it, offline, so, naka-download na siya offline. Sige lang, I will, I will accommodate your questions later ha. Just let me finish lang. So, we will click this one. And then, naka-open na ni siya sa imuhang Microsoft Word or WPS. That means, it is not in Google Docs anymore. Di na siya online. Offline na siya. Edit ni mo dira, isave as ni mo. So, save as THC4 underscore your last name. So, i-rename rana ni mo siya. After that, you go back to the assignment kung asa ko naghatag sa ako ang instructions. So, wala din. Sorry. Kung asa ko, naghatag sa akong instructions. For example, this one. And, i-upload na to siya. Diri, i-upload na your work. Add or create. I-upload ang file nga. Imuhang gi-edit. Imuhang gi-download. Imuhang gi-edit. So, mag-ano na ko ha. Mag-tutorial na ko daan. Kay, there are some of you who do not know how to use Google Drive. Okay. Google Classroom. Browse ka. Ayun. 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 And then turn in. When you click turn in, automatically you're you'll be able na to upload the document in Google Classroom and in my POV as a teacher. In my POV as a teacher, makita na na kung anong submit na ka. So, mom, how will your PC or your laptop? I have other options if you're using your cell phone. So, if cell phone lang. Open mo ang document, abi nga kung i-upload. Mo na abi ni siya. Ma'am, dili man ko kaya download and edit, ma'am. Kay Google Docs ra siya. Like, I have no option in my phone to download the document, edit it, and upload it. So, sa kong buhaton, you will just open the document. Sorry. You open the document, you read the questions. You go to your notes. Notes in yung cellphone, ha? Kanang asa mo mag magbutang-butang baog ko an. You can go to your notes in your cellphone, answer, place your answers there, screenshot, maoy i-upload diri. Screenshots lang i-butang. Ma'am, wala may notes akong cellphone. Sulat ka sa paper. 
you write an you write in a piece of paper you take a picture make sure nga it is ko ano ka nang ma- mabasa siya and then dili pod small ka yung letter so picture ni mo siyang tarong upload it here add or create in your phone na sa bottom part of your screen na sa Google Classroom add or create okay you can just upload a screenshot or a photo of your answers if you will not be able to use a laptop or a PC to download the file, edit it in Microsoft Word, and upload the file again. So, you have a second option if you're using the cell phone. You can just write it in notes or write it on a piece of paper, screenshot, take a picture, upload. Mo mag-upload, makita ni mo ni, turn in. So, mo na siya ha, you have two options, either phone or document. Kung sa itsura, ma'am, if makasubmit na ang student, syempre, ang itsura, yung ano, <laughs> <Wait> lang. <laughs> okay. So, kanin siya ka nag-quiz, magugos ako ng tourism marketing students. So, usually, the, I will see nga naka-turn in na ka, and then, have to be, you have to be mindful of the deadline. If I say, deadline will be until tomorrow, uh, next week pa man ako na early sa activity. Deadline will be until tomorrow 10 p.m. So dapat before 10 p.m. na upload na ka. So syempre mo upload abi ko subong like 1 p.m. na ko siya i-upload. Dayon next day pa na ko ipakoan. Usually if sayon ra man or easy ra man ang ang activity. So short ra ang deadline, but if the activity is hard then I will give a week for you to finish the activity. So, pars sa anin no, nag naghimo ko activity sa kung student. Ma'am, asa makita ang activity? You go to classwork. And then, I will also make an announcement. Class, can you visit your Google Classroom? Nakapost na dira ang activity. Wait lang ha, kayo. Medyo ga-loading ang... Okay. And you wait for a while lang. Siyempre, you have to really submit your work. Have to really make sure. Indication, if successful, na ay nakabotang unsubmit, meaning nasubmit na niyo ang file successfully. Ay, ka, very slow sa ako. Ano. Oh, Makita na ako ang names sa students. If nakasubmit ba sila or wala. So, kani mga assigned lang. Kani naka submit na ano, turn in late turn in oh, so na dire I amining mean, sa turn in naka kuma naka sa activity may naka attach kani mong good google form so meaning dito sa sa form pero kung document in yung ha may, may makabutang attachment dire then nakabutang status so turn in meaning successful siya pag submit turn in late meaning lapas na sa deadline kaning Oh, sila man tanan. Kani mga missing, wala jud naka-submit. Okay? So that is how you will answer it. It's in your class work. Sa inyong Google Classroom, you just explore that one and then I will just upload it next week, okay? For our synchronous activity. I will have another na pud nga online meeting next week to give you instructions on how to answer the activity. This is just letting you familiarize on how to access, download, upload um, materials in Google Classroom if we're going to have an activity using document. If form lang, it's easy for you because if we're going to have an activity using Google Forms, click lang ka sa link, answer lang ka, then submit. Pero kung nana siya yung mga attachments like, like uh, word document, so, kinala lang siya mo i-download ang document itself offline. Okay? So, yan na rin siya class. Sige lang, uh, I will meet you again man Japan next week before ta mag sa activity no so that I can also uh, give you instructions on how to answer it. Four questions raman siya. And then, um, what to do with the document. Okay. Let me just let everyone have the option to unmute so that those have questions pwede sila ka 